America's Forum. I'm J.D. Hayworth. And I'm John Bachman. And J.D., if you've been following the 2014 midterms in the Senate race, Georgia has been on your mind. It's been on our mind as well. The Georgia Senate race is one of the hottest in the country right now, especially for Republicans. The race is flooded with seven GOP candidates vying for the state's uh, coming open Senate seat to replace retiring Republican Senator and well-respected Washington stalwart Saxby Shamless. But none are expected to take a majority of the vote in the upcoming May primary. So what do candidates like David Perdue, the cousin of the former governor, Sonny Perdue, and Jack Kingston, a longstanding uh, uh, Republican congressman, what are they fighting for to finish the top two in advance to a July runoff? But it's a crowded field. Karen Handel, Phil Gingrey, Paul Brown also running in the race as well. The winner will likely face the Democratic nominee of the suspected Democratic nominee, Michelle Nunn. Republicans must pick up, of course, six seats to regain control of the Senate, which could be tough if they lose Georgia, which nobody thought was possible. Uh, just a few years ago, but Georgia now in play for real. And let's talk to a guy who understands Georgia politics very well, a pollster and a guy who uh, I almost said served his time, but but served in the Georgia House of Representatives. Matt Towery, welcome to America's Forum. Thanks so much, J.D. We really appreciate you Skyping in today, Matt. Sure. Now, you wrote a column, Newsmax.com, saying take a look at the South. This is where the control for the U.S. Senate will be decided, but as you do the pre-election or the midterm calculus, is it going to come down to Georgia? Will this race be the linchpin of deciding whether or not there's going to be Republican control of the U.S. Senate? Well, J.D., as you know, I'm also head of the Southern Political Report, which has been out for years and years. We, we cover the entire South. And looking at all the Southern seats, I tend to think that Georgia will be the deciding state as to whether the Senate goes into Republican majority or not. So. Georgia is going to play a critical role in, in whether or not the Republicans can take it back control of the U.S. Senate uh, and really have an effect to, uh, versus President Obama in the last two years of his administration. Matt Towery, we reviewed the ground rules, if you will. Uh, Johnny B., who grew up down in Georgia, talking about the primary process. And obviously that crowded field on the Republican side, while uh, young Ms. Nunn can sit there comparatively quietly and wait for the general election. Let's drill down a little bit on, on the Republican choices. You're out in the field quite a bit, and it would seem to me that given the number of candidates and, and given where we are in the election process, that there would be a whole lot of intensity on the Republican side. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are you detecting a, a lack of intensity or a dip in that intensity right now among Republicans? Well, yes, we are. In fact, the polling has a large undecided, which at this point, with early voting beginning in just a matter of a week or so, you would normally not see that sort of, uh, that sort of undecided level. It's almost at 30 percent. But we're seeing that in other states around the country as well. This giant swell of Republican voters that we all thought we would see, uh, a la 2010, just isn't developing right now. The economy is improving a little bit, and I think that's having some effect as to the degree to which people feel like turning out for these elections. Now, that may change, and in Georgia, we certainly have uh, almost uh, three to four weeks until we have the actual vote. But they've got to pick it up very quickly, because right now it looks like it's going to be a relatively tepid, sort of mediocre turnout for that big Republican uh, primary that should, in past years, decide who would be the next U.S. Senator. Well, Matt, looking at the poll numbers here, a little surprising, I have to admit, that Paul Brown isn't doing as well as some might think he would because he seems like the guy who's done, his, done the most to try and position, position himself as the anti-Jack Kingston, if you can do that uh, in, in Georgia. Are the voters of Georgia not listening to Paul Brown? Because he's certainly one who's tried to hold himself up as the Tea Party guy, the guy maybe uh, farther right than the rest of the crowd. Well, John, first of all, uh, he doesn't have the money really right now to be on television in a substantial way. And okay. TV in Georgia, just like in so many other states, decides who is going to be in a runoff. If you're not on TV, you're just not playing the game. The second thing that's happened is that in Georgia and other states in the South, when we poll and we ask individuals if they identify with the Tea Party, that identification of Republicans with the Tea Party philosophy has dropped. In 2010, it was almost 80 percent among Republican primary voters. Now, uh, this year, it's about 11 percent. So now, now, Matt, is that is that we're going to see something similar to like what we saw uh, in Texas recently in their primary where we saw the Tea Party now really having a bigger role in local politics, not so much on the national level. The Tea Party, a force in Texas in that uh, Republican primary a few months ago. But 
in the national race, it didn't seem to have that much of an impact. Is that where the Tea Party is moving now, these local elections? Yes, absolutely. They're moving to local elections. And uh, in some of the states, like Georgia, the Tea Party has become fragmented. You have one group of Tea Party uh, organizers who uh, sort of identify with what they call green tea. They, they push issues like solar energy and some, some issues that you would not necessarily associate with conservative Tea Party side. And it's sort of taken their brand and made it very muddled for the consumer in Georgia. As a result, I don't see the Tea Party playing a big role on these big national races, at least with regard to the U.S. Senate. They might play a role when you get to the runoff, and that you both alluded to a runoff. Yes, you have to get 50 percent in Georgia. My expectation is no one will get there. And I would imagine that in the hot Georgia July, the more likely voters are going to be your hardcore Republicans and your more uh, su substantial conservatives. And that does get you more into that group of Tea Party uh, folks who voted in 2010. So my uh, my three former colleagues in the House all decided the up or out approach trying to go to the U.S. Senate. I would imagine in the not too distant future, if the conversations have not already been held, the, the notion that those members of Congress will try to get together for whomever finishes in second place. But I want to talk a little bit about the role of women. You mentioned Karen Handel, the former Georgia Secretary of State and uh, young Ms. Nunn, the daughter of Sam Nunn on the Democrat side. What about Karen in this race on the Republican side? Is is that the wild card? Uh, and if she does not win the nomination or get to the runoff, could we see a kind of gender alignment uh, if she doesn't win to, to see some Republican women uh, cross the aisle and go vote for a young Ms. Nunn? Well, J.D., you're, you're clearly on top of things this year. I, I wrote in my national column months ago to watch the Democrats. They were going to be working primarily in trying to show how there is a gender separation and a problem, a gap in this country. And that's what we're seeing them do in states all over the nation. That's part of why you see Michelle Nunn in this race this year. Karen Handel, ironically, and I find this true of many uh, women who run on the Republican side, isn't necessarily getting the female vote. When I look at the crosstabs, she's doing much better with men than she is with women. That was also her problem back in 2010 when she ran for governor and barely lost to Nathan Deal in a runoff. So I think Karen is the wild card, as you alluded to. She is coming up in the polls. The question is, will she have the money to go on television in the massive Atlanta metropolitan market? That's really what decides these races. I think she'll do better outside of metro Atlanta. But if she could get on television, she could remind, particularly folks in North Fulton, when it, where, where one time she was the uh, head of the uh, county commission for Fulton County and very beloved up there, who she is. If that happens, she could slip ahead of Jack Kingston and end up in that runoff. Regardless, yes, you're going to see in Georgia um, an effort by the Democrats to make this the year of the women. They're going to talk about disparities in wages. They're going to talk about other issues that generally appeal to female voters. And we have a tight governor's race, um, which is not going to make things any easier for a Republican nominee. So it, it's a cautionary tale for Republicans. I just want to drill down a little more on somebody who's we mentioned in passing, but kind of left it. You're telling us right now the field is David Perdue and everybody else. Now, about a month ago, there was a dust up. David Perdue had something to say about Karen Handel's lack of a college education. That apparently has not affected him, at least based on the polling thus far, or has it? Well, it, the only way it affected him is it occurred when Sarah Palin was in Atlanta campaigning for uh, Karen Handel. And so as that news broke, it got a little more attention than it normally would have received. It had a lot of chatter among those who are active among Republicans, but really not, not much else. So I, I think the, the fact that uh, Purdue made this comment, if he wins the nomination, it's probably going to be a bigger problem for him when he's running in a against a Democrat in November, because those words will come back to haunt him. And Michelle Nunn will simply say, is that how you feel about women, that they should all live abroad, which is another issue that he talked about, that he... he He'd lived and run companies uh, overseas and knew more about the global economy. That's going to be a real problem because, as we said earlier, the Democrats are going to try to paint the Republicans as elitist and out of touch with women, particularly working women. That's who they're targeting, and that's where that comment from Purdue will really have the most impact should he make it to the big dance this fall. A, a little more than a minute left, and John and I talk about this quite a bit, He uh, being raised in Georgia. This whole thing about the Democrats, one of uh, Jimmy Carter's uh, grandsons running for the Democrat nomination for governor. You've got uh, Ms. Nunn, Michelle Nunn, running for the Democrat nomination for the U.S. Senate. Is this a year where those legacy names will make a difference for the Democrats in the Peach State? 
Well, it's interesting because Georgia, if you look at its history, uh, usually runs contrary to the rest of the South. When the South was electing Republican governors, Georgia was not. Georgia was the last of the southern states to choose a Republican governor in 2002. I do say watch this Carter deal race very carefully. Georgia had a massive snow, snowstorm in January. The governor wasn't prepared for it. These people let him down, and all of his independent support in the polls vanished. He's in a tight race with Carter. Carter may pull none over or none may pull Carter over, or they mo may both get right to the brink and not quite make it this year. But I wow. expect very tight races. Georgia is going to be a very tightly run race. You heard it here from Matt Towery. Matt, we'll check back with you. Keep an eye on what's going on in Georgia. See, John, it's really going on in your home state. Love talking about my home state, and that's why we'll keep talking about it. Aside from the fact that it's an interesting race throughout America's form throughout the year. We'll be back with more, though, and uh, stay tuned.